Namaste, my dear friends. Referring to you now, reverse charge mechanism, where the government of India, upon the recommendation of the JST Council, notified list of identified goods where the recipient only liable to pay GST, not by the supplier. Likewise, we too have list of services where the recipient liable to pay GST by identified by issuing the notification upon the recommendation of the GST Council. Otherwise, in general, a particular taxable supply for which GST apply on supplier only identified goods or services notified by notification recipient only liable to pay GST now I am referring to you the reverse charge mechanism there are identified goods notified under the reverse charge mechanism dear friends here if you refer prior to this particular May 24 examination CA Institute ICAI very clearly stated that supply of goods where the reverse charge applicable is excluded from the syllabus. However, in the recent past, Institute issued amendments applicable for our May 2024 exam onwards, wherein very clearly stated that the supply of goods for which reverse charge applicable is included in the syllabus of May 2024 exam onwards. Resultantly, now I am going to bring to a notice here by discussing reverse charge mechanism where the supply of goods takes place. If so, government notified recipient only liable to pay GST upon the recommendation of GST Council. What are those goods? One by one I am referring here for your kind consideration. One, cash or net, not shield, not peeled, supplied by an agriculturalist. Cash or net, not shield, not peeled. Meaning what? In this following manner. Here, if you refer, this type of cash units, not shield, not peeled. If it is supplied by an agriculturalist to the recipient who is a registered person, in that case, the liability to pay the GST in the hands of the recipient. Recipient only liable to pay GST. Cash on it, not peeled, not shield. However, if the cash on it is like this nature, namely in the following nature cash on it, which is ready to eat after shield, after packing, if this type of cash on it is supplied, then it is not under the reverse charge mechanism. It is a forward charge, GST attract. If it is packed in package, pre-packaged commodity manner, not exceeding 25 kilos pack, in that case, 5% GST will attract. Forward charge. It is under reverse charge. It is, these cash units are different from the cash unit what I mentioned here. Cash units, not peeled, not shield. So, reverse charge applicable only for Cash on it, not shield, not paid. Further, my dear friends, reverse charge category BD wrapper leaves. We also called as this particular BD wrapper, we also call tendu leaves. BD wrapper leaves are tendu, where supplier of this particular goods is an agriculturalist. That is important to note. And the recipient should be a registered person under GST. Located in the taxable territory. Who liable to pay GST? 
the recipient liable to pay GST under the reverse charge mechanism. Same as our cash owners, not peeled, not shield. There also supplier should be an agriculturalist and the recipient should be a registered person. Located in the taxable territory, the recipient only liable to pay GST. Further, tobacco leaves, tobacco leaves, if it is supplied by an agriculturalist to a registered person who is located in the taxable territory, the liability on the recipient under RCM, the recipient only liable to pay GST. Such particular tobacco leaves may be raw form of leaves, no problem. It may be harvested and supplied or it may be harvested, thereafter stored coat for some time, became dried one and supplied as long as tobacco leaves supplied by an agriculturalist to the recipient who is a registered person located in the taxable tree being a recipient, registered person, recipient only liable to pay GST. This is what? Recipient only liable to pay GST in the given case. Further, my dear friends, here we used to call it as this and all the what we can call it, essential oils which are extracting especially namely called from the uh, mint, menta we used to call it or otherwise the uh, what we can call it, citrus nature fruits like lemon oriented from that extracting the oil. So in that case, in the given case, essential oils other than those of citrus fruits are followed by of peppermint, menta or otherwise uh, we can call it here the e menta I mean to say spectra or water mint oil or otherwise we could call it here menta leaf stress or we also be called here bergamot oil bergamot oil so it is bergamot oil is this my dear friends fruit bergamot fruit from that extracting oil which is also called in our Tamil Narthanga Telugu is to be called it is a Narinja so like that a product extracting the oil so as a whole if you extract this type of a uh, product by cultivating as a farmer you must be an agriculturalist to supply this type of product supplier should be an agriculturalist supplier should be an agriculturalist in the given case the recipient should be a registered person in that case my dear friends the liable to pay the gst on the recipient who is a registered person liable to pay gst under the reverse charge mechanism for all type of this nature of products menta menta uh, flower from that extracting the oil or bergamot oil as the case may be so in that case this supplied by the an agriculturalist to a richer person the recipient big richer person located in the taxable tree only liable to pay gst in the given case further my dear friends referring here supply of lottery tickets which is one of the specified actionable claims as defined under section 2 sub section 102 capital a of the cgst cap this particular lottery tickets is called goods who is competent to print and sell these lottery tickets state governments or the local authorities are the competent to print and sell this type of lottery tickets supplier is the state government or the local authority the recipient is a commission agent in that case the recipient being a commission agent only liable to pay gst on such supply of lottery tickets which is under reverse charge its valuation 
its taxation will be referred under the valuation chapter. Further, my dear friends, referring here, silk and this is a raw form, raw form of silk and which is supplied by any person who manufactures silk and from silk or silk cocoon, silk warm cocoons means silk warm threads, which is see how the silk, what is the silk thread? We'll extract no. You are aware of that the caterpillars while flying is to reside on mulber leaves and forming the net around it. Then the farmers are pulling the net coils of caterpillars, pouring in warm water, extracting the the raw particular silk, which is called as silk warm cocoons. In that case, from that made this type of threads, silk and thread manufactured by any person and supplied to a registered person. Since the silk and threads resultantly supplied to a registered person, recipient only liable to pay GST being a registered person. Supplier here may be a registered person because I am referring any person. Any person means not only an agriculturalist, he may be a registered person also. As long as silk and supplied to a registered person, a registered person being a recipient only liable to pay GST. Further, my dear friends, from here, huh, important point I am referring here. Here we have some amendment also, used vehicle, seized and confiscated goods, oil, uh, the, the, sorry, say, old and used goods, waste and scrap, supplied by the central government, state government, unitary or local authority to a registered person. In that case, recipient only liable to pay GST in the given case. We do have here one amendment which one can expect in the examination of CA final or CA inter as the case may be. Now here if you refer this, used vehicles, first and foremost, used vehicles, seized and confiscated goods, old and used goods, waste and scrap, supplier, central government, state government, unitary or local authority, supply to whom? Recipient, who is a registered person, located in the tax obituary, if so, who liable to pay GST? Recipient only liable to pay GST. I will tell you with one example. GST department squared confiscated a particular goods carriage vehicle which is used for unauthorized unlawful means activities under GST law the GST squad confiscated the goods carriage vehicle and the owner of the vehicle is absconded confiscation means the ownership on the goods shifting to department from the owner. Therefore, now who is the owner of this confiscated motor vehicle designed to carry goods is the department of GST, which is government. Now, the government is coming forward to sell that particular confiscated goods carriage vehicle. And they used to call for bid one of the company, let us say, X Private Limited from Chennai, Rishwa person applied the highest amount to purchase that particular vehicle. So, the GST department is handing over that particular uh, vehicle, selling that vehicle to the highest bid, X Private Limited of Chennai with the Rishwa person. Of course, Rishwa person only can able to apply for the bid when the government asks for the bid especially. Now, who liable to pay GST? Who is the seller of these goods? GST Department Government of Central Government of India. Recipient. Recipient is a X Private Limited located in the Chennai Rishwa person. The liability arranges to pay on X Private Limited under RCM being a Rishwa person, X Limited only liable to pay GST. Now, coming to the amendment which is taken place here. 
from 20th October 2023. What happened here is Indian Railways, Ministry of Railways, none other than government, central government of India, Ministry of Railways, Indian Railways. If they provide supply of goods, if they provide supply of services, which is forward charge, liable to pay GST by supplier provided if it is not specifically qualified for exemption. Now, assume a scenario, Indian Railways of Southern Zone coming forward to sell their old furniture. Old furniture means used furniture. One company from Hyderabad, H Limited, Hyderabad, Rishra person quoted the highest bid. He is the winner to purchase that particular old furniture of Indian Railways. In that case, supplier of the goods, used goods by Indian Railways. Recipient of this used goods is H Limited of Hyderabad, Rishra person located in the Telangana state. In that case, who is liable to pay GST? Indian Railways being a supplier, forward charge because taxable supply. Therefore, Indian Railways, Southern Indian, Southern Indian zone liable to pay GST, being Indian Railways supplier liable to pay GST, or the recipient being a registered person, H Limited, located in the Telangana state, recipient liable to pay GST. If that person comes into picture from 20th October 2023 very clearly got law got amended it is a forward charge indian railways south zone of india indian railways ministry of railways being a supplier only liable to pay gst for this used goods supply to rishra person is it is an exception from the given statement central government except indian railways of course we too have the earlier one point is called Indian Postal Department. Indian Postal Department provide the supply of goods or services where there won't be any uh, what we can call it, a reverse charge. Is a forward charge if not qualify for exemption. As simple as in this context, here there is an amended provision now from 20th October 2023, Indian Railways, Ministry of Finance, though may be Government of India, it may be Central Government of India, if they supply the used goods or if they supply the confiscated goods, for example, I am telling you, or if supplied to a registered person being a supplier, Indian Railways only liable to pay GST, it is not going to come under the reverse charge mechanism. It is an amended provision one can expect in the coming examination of May 2024 onwards. Further, my dear friends, referring here for your kind consideration, here raw cotton, raw cotton. If raw cotton comes into picture, supplier should be an agriculturalist, recipient should be a registered person who is located in the taxable area. The recipient being registered person only liable to pay GST under RCM where the supply of goods are in the nature of raw cotton. Raw cotton. You may get a doubt, sir. Supplier is a, an agriculturalist, recipient is a registered person, then RCM apply. For example, in the given case or any case for the earlier what I referred, uh, cash on it's not paid, not shield and all I refer, no, wherever supplier agriculturalist, recipient, a registered person. Suppose supplier is an agriculturalist, recipient is unregistered person. In that case, basically reverse charge, but the recipient is unregistered person. Then supplier is unregistered person, being an agriculturalist. Recipient also be an extra person, then it is not liable for GST on neither on supplier nor recipient. If the recipient is already got registered in GST law, being a registered person, if he procured goods from an agriculturalist, like 
for example, raw cotton, then it is a reverse charge recipient liable to pay GST, being a registered person under GST. If the recipient is a registered person, question of a reverse charge does not arise here. No charge arises here. Because a transaction of taxable supply between two unregistered persons, there won't be any GST. Further reference to you for kind consideration, my dear friends. Yes. Here, important point I am referring. Priority sec uh, the PSLC, Priority Sector Lending Certificate. What it is, how to understand this? Priority Sector Lending Certificate. I will explain to you the meaning of it. Priority Sector Lending Certificate. How we should understand this? My dear friends, if you take HDFC Home Loan or otherwise ICIC Lombard, a insurance company, NBFC, State Bank of India, a banking company, IDBI Bank, Industry Development Bank. These are the financial institutions. Their priority as per their bylaws in case of HDFC home loan, they used to give more priority their capital, they are going to fund, fund only going to invest for the home loan purpose like that IDBI industry development purpose they used to fund but these are the banking companies NBFCs in their inner heart obviously there is a soft corner to help our farmers Annadatas here but their bylaws not permitting IDBI bank their major capital should invest for industrial development purpose for that only they have to provide the loans and all not for agriculturalist to an agriculture purpose then bylaws may not provide facility to invest more amount but if you refer here a particular non-banking financial company called as NABARD NABARD is the bank which is especially incorporated to fund more and more their source of funds for the welfare or for the protection of farmers and lending more and more loans providing to the farmers for cultivation purpose, agriculture purpose, where NABAD invested almost all their major capital to cultivation sector by lending the loans by providing loans to farmers still they need more fund other banks their bylaws not permitting to fund more and more their capital to agriculture sector therefore here what happened Nabird is coming out with a concept called as issuing bonds and these bonds are going to procure by other financial institutions. If so, those financial institutions like IDBI, HDFC, State Bank, they feel very happy by investing in NABARD bonds. Thereby, NABARD is collecting the amount from them and going to be provide this particular fund investing in the agriculture sector. So, as a result, these other banks, instead of directly they are able to provide the loan to the Anadatas farmers, but they are providing indirectly through the channel of NABARD, 
in that case those banks are very happy yes we are also contributing helping to our farmers so in the given case what happened now bird promising to the other banks who are going to buy this particular bond these bonds if you purchase the main priority of the fund collecting from these bonds going to be lend to farmers for development of cultivation activities in india so the priority is given by nabar to agriculture sector as a result collecting the funds from other banks in that case such a bonds are issued priority sector lending certificates to mobilize the funds nabar issued is supply of goods clarification given by the cbs if so who is the purchase of this particular goods the other banking companies nbfcs if there is a case who liable to pay gst on such supply of security this priority lending uh, certificates in that case the recipient namely banking companies nbfcs who are procuring these bonds they are the recipient those recipient only liable to pay gst not by the nabard who issued priority sector lending certificate is a supplier of the goods he is not liable to pay gst the recipient of that bonds namely the goods by investing the money the recipient only liable to pay gst which is under rcm this is what in the given case i mentioned for your kind consideration supply of goods by any registered person to recipient of goods any registered person what type of goods it is priority sector lending certificate the priority of a nabard to lend money only for agriculture is a priority sector for which they are issuing priority sector lending certificates that is called goods the recipient of that particular priority sector lending certificates only liable to pay gst not by the supplier 